In our last video, we covered everything you need to do to Symphasend by year 11, just like we did. So now you are wondering what to do next after we Symphasend, which path should we choose? Should we go for modularity? Should we go for which authorities and etc. But in this video, we'll be covering everything after you Symphasend, so you can snowball your empire even further. Because although the early game is very very important, after you ascend, you need to make the right decisions if you wanna have a very good snowball into the mid game and later on into the end game. So first what we need to do is set up our approach for the synthetization. We can either go with careful approach and that will upload 100 pops per month to their new bodies or we go with the full speed converting 200 pops for their new bodies. Now I really really prefer to use the full speed because it will double the speed obviously and in the early game we do not need that many alloys and you're, you're gonna see it finishes off pretty quickly and if you are enjoying Join this, join our navy and help us build something greater. High Command has called for two and a half thousand new commanders to be enlisted and your skills and leadership are vital to our mission of defending the universe. Since you only had like 600 pops, what it happens is within 8 months, oh yeah, it already finished, who would have guessed. So we end the synthetic fertility event chain and we gain the synthetic dawn modifier. So basically our synthetic pops are even stronger than regular synths because they have more points, picks and also the synthetic salvation trait which increases our job efficiency from bureaucrats and a little bit of happiness. And here on the synthetic rebirth you can either go with the identity fusion or the identity initialization. Now what it does is those technologies, they will unlock two new policies for you depending on which one you research first. Now ideally, in my opinion, you should go with identity initialization because it will increase your pop assembly cost by plus 20%, which is kind of bad. However, it will increase your happiness by plus 5 and resources from jobs by plus 5. The other two options, which would be the identity fusion or identity copies, would actually only give you negative modifiers and not a single one good. And on top of that, we gain access to two very powerful edicts, one improving our mechanical pop assembly by plus 15% and the other one making our leaders a little bit more powerful. So since we are below our edict fund, we can actually just right away activate those two edicts and we already have a very good bonus to our population. Uh, we can also activate the capacity subsidies, why not, right? And now that we have synth ascended, we must build an identity complex in one of our planets so we can continue our situation. Here I'm gonna build it on our capital world because I'm still deciding on what I'm gonna do with our colonies. One thing we can do after we sift ascend is sell out all of our monthly food production because we don't need them anymore, we have become machines. And now that our economy is a little bit more stabilized, we can start building up research and mining stations whenever we can. Now, you will start the digital refactoring event chain after you synthesize, and here we will always have two or even three options from which to choose. One of these options will be focused on the physical aspect of your ascension and the other one will be focused on the virtual aspect. So here you can pretty much get an idea of what it will happen at the final stages of this event. So if you choose a more physical approach in general throughout the whole event chain, you'll end up having the modularity ascension benefits and also the physical government authorities, which in my opinion are much better than the virtual ones. And the same one goes for the virtual paths. If we go this way, we'll have obviously the benefits from virtual ascension. However, my friends, keep in mind those are not the benefits from the virtual tradition tree. So you won't have the virtual pops spawning every time you construct a new building. Instead, you only have the powerful edict 
and also the powerful virtual trade. So in the end, I really think that modularity here is much stronger. So for our first option, we should focus on the freedom of movement because this one is obviously the physical option. The other one is we can come up with means to create remotely operated surrogate soldiers to alleviate the rigors of war. So basically war drones and obviously it's the virtual option. In every single one of these pop-ups you can read the text and you pretty much know which one is the physical and the virtual. Now in the synth provenance we can choose three options. The first one will be the physical choice However, it will grant us a spiritualist epics attraction for 50 years, man. And if you look at this, we are not spiritualist. So this will hurt our faction output. In the end, we only need to have a surplus of physical choices over the virtual ones, but in the middle of the path, we can choose any virtual if you want to. So here I think I'm gonna go with unrestricted body modification, because this will grant us materialist ethics attraction, which is exactly what we are. And I mean, 50 years is quite a long time in Stellaris. We are gonna go with virtual for this choice. And Strigikaki got the Unified Council. Ah, fantastic, man. How wonderful. Plus 20 monthly unity. And there we have it, folks. The synthesized society. We can adopt the physical government form and also have the advanced traits, which basically is modularity in the end. Or we can stay this way, just like we are. Obviously, we are gonna go for this option that is not much. To think about here and now after we research the machine template system technology which we already are just 13 months remaining we will be able to modify all of our pops this also got us the democratic transference government form and what it does is it's quite good so look at here it gives us plus one percent job efficiency for the specialists per districts my friends so for instance in our capital which is a size a in the world, if we pick something like the Mastery of Nature, which increases the number of districts by plus two, then we get an orbital ring, increasing it even further by plus four, and let's say we get the expansion tradition tree, granting us another one, we'll have a 25 planet size, which will boost our job efficiency for the specialist by plus 25%. So it's kind of ridiculous, especially in the new patch, which districts are the most important part of your empire. It is not buildings, it is districts now for our next tradition we want to focus on our economy if we had found a nearby alien empire and they were hostile to us we should grab the Nurin tradition but so far we haven't made contact with anyone else so what we can do is focus on the economy and now we're gonna adopt the mercantile for one main reason so if you look at our economy, we are having a very large surplus of energy credits and that should maintain throughout the game for one simple reason. After we research the Dyson Swarms technology, most of our energy will come from our mining stations. And on top of that, later on, we can have the Dyson Sphere creating us massive amounts of energy credits. Now action, why are you talking about energy? You are actually losing consumer goods. Well, my friends, we are going to adopt mercantile because we can have the consumer benefits trade policy which converts trade to consumer goods instead of energy this way we can focus on tech rushing without having that massive worry about our consumer goods deficits on top of that mercantile will grant us basically benefits throughout the whole empire increasing our trade and amenities per 100 civilians they will also grant us plus amenities from traders increase the trade from jobs, increase the monthly trade and reduce the market fee, which is very important since we are buying what we don't produce and selling what we produce at surplus. But don't get me wrong here, prosperity could also be a very good option, it's just that I have the plan on having all of our consumer goods come from trade and have all of our specialists work as scientists instead of consumer good jobs. Now that we research the machine template system, we can can modify our pops however our next technology will grant us plus three machine modification points 
So I guess we wait a little bit and have our pups much more efficient. Oh, in our last video we found the Gargantua and boy you cannot ignore the system. So by doing the special project, reaching for the orb, we can have the infinity machine helping us in our research, granting us, I think it was plus 10% research speed, or was it plus 5%, I can't remember right away, but it is basically a free research speed bonus for you. So always do this, right? Now we can have the mercantile perk we wanted before, so we grab this, we go to our government and we change the trade policy to consumer benefits. Now in the next month our consumer good production should be very much on the positive side. Fantastic, plus 28 per month. What we can do instead is shift our economic policy back to militarized economy since we won't be producing consumer goods from jobs but instead from trade. And here on our capital, instead of having a mixed industry district, what we can have is after we have 1000 minerals, which should come up pretty quickly, we go and grab the heavy industry. So as a matter of fact, why don't we sell some food and buy some minerals and do just that. Now we can contact the main processor unit or hack the constant calculator if you are a materialist. So I have just looked it up on the wiki and I, I actually didn't know this, but if we hack it, we have a 50% chance of gaining plus 5% research speed. However, if we contact the main processor, we can have a 25% chance of gaining 10% research speed and 75% chance of gaining the Positronic AI technology. So I think we are gonna try to contact the main processor unit because in the worst case scenario we'll also gain a technology whereas by trying to hack it we can gain nothing from it. So yeah, let's do this one. Oh, nice to meet you. Alright, why don't go with this statement is false. Can we assist in our research and we will allocate resources to you. So our scientist will stay stuck here for 1800 days. Well, since he is one of our most leveled up scientists, we can actually just hire someone that is under leveled because it does not change the time. Like having a high level scientist here is just not worth it. We just hire a common one and just build a science ship to continue our surveys. So a lot of things happening at the same time. The first and most important one is that we have the cross model standardization, which means we can now modify all of our pops by creating a template. So these will be our main species. They will have everything proving their job efficiency and especially the research job efficiency. And in the previous patch, what we could do is actually have another subspecies with only pop production bonuses. So we build those pops very rapidly and we then assimilate them in our main kind. However, I'm gonna try to do this in this patch, but I don't know if that would gonna work. So we'll get, we'll have to see it later on. Another thing that happened is we can launch our agenda, giving us more monthly unity, and now we are going to make progress towards expanding the council finally. And now that we are also suffering from shortage of dark matter, but I'm actually losing minus 0.00, but okay. We can actually ignore it because we're losing only minus 30% resources from jobs. And the Dark Matter engine grants us plus 40% job efficiency. So in the end, we are making a surplus of at least plus 10%. But it is actually even more than that because job efficiency is much better than resources from jobs as a modifier. The only problem is that our build speed and sublight speed are very minimal because of this. So what we can do is set up the Lucara chassis, which is the main pop build speed to be integrated into our default subspecies, which is this one. So by doing this, we already have a massive population change of plus 56 last month on our capital worlds and on the other worlds, things are still getting some traction. Another thing that we can do now that we have ascended is set up our citizen species type instead of utopian abundance, which costs a lot of consumer goods 
we go for the academic privilege and that will actually improve our job efficiency for researchers as well. In our technologies, we want to research the ion thrusters because this will increase our sublight speed for our science ships, which currently are suffering a lot from the sublight speed reduction. And here we have the Dyson Swarm, just as I was saying before. Fantastic. Election, let's elect our president again. And what we can do before the election as well is reform our government, removing the parliamentary system. Because if you look at these factions are only producing us 72 unity out of the 300 we are making. So not very good in the end. We will go with the merchant guilds because this will grant us merchant jobs in our capital buildings, which will provide us trade and thus provide us with consumer goods as well, increasing our overall pop efficiency. Here on New Hope, where we have the, the Happy Capybaras, we also have a plus 25% society research from jobs, so we are obviously gonna have a society research specialization zone to capitalize on that. Here on Desert Rest, our Gaia world, we have a plus 10% resources from jobs, and ideally we want to have our forge world here because of one simple reason. Resources from metallurgist jobs is not a very common modifier, much less common than let's say resources from physicists. So this will be more optimized in the end. And here on New Dawn, we have a overall small bonus to our society and engineering research. And we will also need to improve our unity, so why not build an archive zone here? Oh boy, we found the other Drake. This is not good, Sapri Hras is on a tough battle. Yeah, and he died. Unfortunately, my guy. And a shout out to our first founding admirals. Their financial and strategical support are fueling the non stop expansion of our armada. Now, founding members are only available until Sunday this week because we will be starting off our first roleplay playthrough, and founding members will be able to submit their custom empires so we can interact together in our first playthrough. Now, if you want to have a more proactive participation in the channel, this might be be the best opportunity for you and if you just join you can access our discord server participate in our exclusive channels where we discuss some strategies and submit your empire builds there here it is exactly what i was saying just look at how productive our researcher jobs are we only have 320 biologists but they account for 780 so more than two times the regular production and that is without even accounting for the bonuses from their resources from jobs here although we have a minus 30 percent resource production from our dark matter shortage we are producing instead of 46 which would be the base production we are making 73 so yeah, almost double, even with the negative bonus. So very strong overall. And this economy here, my guys, only tends to increase in productivity after we research the dark matter drawing technology and can grab the dark matter consortium civic, which will grant us dark matter for every physicist jobs, basically having a very large production. So we'll never suffer from this shortage. And later on, what we can do is finish up the mercantile tradition, go here for something like the discovery, so we can, well, discover all of this massive galaxy, on top of increasing our researcher efficiency and reducing their consumer good cost. So yeah everyone, I hope you guys enjoyed this little guide on making your empire as efficient as possible after you self ascend. In the next video, we'll be continuing this build and making it even stronger, so in the mid game we have a massive powerhouse that can take control of the whole galaxy. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave that like button, and I will see you guys next time. Next time.